Finally, we can start. All right. I'd like to welcome you all uh, this morning to the uh, commission ceremony for soon to be Lieutenant Ochigbo. Uh, I am Chief of R. I'm a Navy recruiter. Uh, I would say it's been a pleasure working with him. He's uh, been an outstanding gentleman. Uh, not like he has a choice because he's a priest, right? <laughs> but, uh, but other than me being a priest, um, the, the report that I've heard from everyone who knows him has been very, very outstanding. And um, the Navy is very lucky to have him. I can say that for, for a fact. And I know the Chaplain Corps is lucky to have him as well. And I, I know, I know uh, Captain here can testify to that. All right, so uh, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start. So this is gonna be a covered event as announced earlier on. All my military folks in the house, please make sure you are wearing your cover. So with that being said, can we have the national anthem? It is our honor to present the United States national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed It's going to be the opening prayer, and this is going to be led by Father Tom Kiley. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Dear Father, I am grateful for the opportunity opportunity to join these officers, fellow clergy, and all of Father Emmanuel's families and friends in thanking us, thanking you for the gift of his life. We are looking forward to his commissioning, what it will do for him and what he will do for the Navy because of it. Father, under the protection of your umbrella, bless him in this new direction in his life that he is taking. Shine your light upon him as he goes out to do his best for you, for our country, and for the Navy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Next, I'm gonna need uh, Lieutenant Brian Reedy to come explain the, exp um, the duties and call of being a chaplain officer.
Please be seated. Vocati ad servitium, that is, called to serve. The history of the military chaplain arguably begins 1,700 years ago in the Roman Empire with a young man named Martin from a region of the empire known now as Hungary. Martin's father was a high-ranking officer in the Roman Imperial Cavalry. And Christianity had, not, had just been legalized in the empire, and although neither of his parents were Christian, at the age of 10, Martin responded to the call of the gospel and became a catechumen, studying to be baptized. At the age of 15, Martin was required to follow his father into the cavalry corps of the Roman army. And by the time that he was 18, Martin is believed to have served throughout Europe, eventually being selected to serve in Milan as part of the elite emperor's guard. And during this time, Martin encountered a beggar while he was on mission in what is now northern France. The beggar was poorly clothed and he was freezing to death in the frigid winter weather. Martin removed his military cloak, and with his sword, he cut it in half. He gave half of his cloak to the beggar and redressed himself in the remnant. That night, Martin had a vision in which Christ appeared to him, saying, Martin, a simple catechumen has clothed me with his own cloak. Martin was moved by the vision and understood it as a call to serve Christ in the church as a priest. However, his military career prevented him from receiving the necessary training. Two years after his baptism, he finally asked for permission to leave the Roman army to prepare for the priesthood. However, since there seemed to be an imminent war with the Germans, Martin was accused of cowardice by his commander. Martin responded by offering to stand before the enemy unarmed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Martin pledged, and protected not by helmet and shield, but by the sign of the cross, I will thrust myself into the thickest squadrons of the enemy without fear. This display of faith and courage impressed his commander and his comrades. However, he was denied the opportunity to fulfill his pledge when the Germans sought peace, and Martin received his honorable discharge. Now free from the demands of his service, Martin could pursue his formation as a priest. He traveled to Tours, France, where he was ordained a priest and then bishop. He founded two monasteries while in France, both of which were destroyed in the French Revolution, which, at which time we also lost St. Martin's most famous relic. That is, the remnant of the cloak that he had divided with the freezing Christ. This remnant, stored at his monastery in Tours, was revered deeply by the Catholics of France, including the monarchs. We have records that major oaths were sworn on the holy relic for centuries. Additionally, the king of France, or a delegated general, would carry the little cloak, la capella, before them in war, invoking the, sa the saint's protection for soldiers. When furled, it was kept but in the king's priest's tent, and the cloth gave its name to the tent, which gave its name to the priest. That is, the capella gave its name to the tent, a chapel giving its name to the priest, 
a chaplain. Thus, we bear the name chaplain in English from the Cape of St. Martin of Tours. Fast forwarding a few centuries, our story of the Navy chaplain picks back up with the foundation of the Royal Navy. Although warships were used by the English kings from the early medieval period, the modern Royal Navy traces its origins to 1546, when it was formally established by Henry VIII, making it the oldest of the United Kingdom's armed forces. And on this continent, even before the Revolutionary War, early American ships adopted many of the practices and traditions of the British Navy, including the staffing of larger ships with a chaplain and the use of a ship's bell for communication. And additionally, there was a custom in the Royal Navy that the ship's bell was used as a christening bowl for baptism. And once a baptism was complete, the child's name was inscribed in the bell. And indeed, many of the honorable ships of our fleet in the United States carry on this practice, and their ship's bells carry these holy inscriptions. The history of the United States Chaplain Corps itself and the Navy it serves dates back to the early months of the American Revolution. On 13 October 1775, the Continental Congress established the Continental Navy. The next month, on 10 November 1775, the Congress established the Marine Corps. And a few days later, on 28 November 1775, the Congress established regulations to govern the new Navy. Article 2 of these regulations directed captains of their ships to provide for religious services aboard their ships. This date is regarded as the birth date of the United States Chaplain Corps. On 28 October 1778, the first official Navy chaplain, Benjamin Balk, reported aboard the frigate named Boston. Already fully informed with the practices of the Royal Navy, chaplains were not granted rank or uniform, but only called chaplain, pastor, or parson, and dressed in clerical garb. Due to Chaplain Balk's honorable service in sea battle, he earned the nickname the Fightin' Parson. After independence was won from England, the Continental Navy was essentially dissolved. Although the U.S. Constitution adopted in 1787 provided for a navy, because no ships were built for 13 years, the United States had no navy to speak of. However, piracy and international conflict compelled Congress to create the Department of the Navy on 30 April 1798 and construct warships for it. On 30 October 1799, Reverend William Buck, son of the first Navy chaplain Benjamin Buck, was commissioned as the first Navy chaplain under the new Department of the Navy and continued his father's honorable service. During the Civil War, the Chaplain Corps experienced several notable changes, including the granting of relative Navy ranks to chaplains and the authorization of chaplains to wear a Navy uniform with the appropriate rank devices and with a cross indicating their branch insignia. The earliest documented occurrence of the Navy chaplains serving with Marines occurred in the Civil War. However, it was not until the second decade of the 20th century that Navy chaplains began to be regularly assigned to Marine units. Throughout the 19th century, the Chaplain Corps was consistently undermanned by Congress and not able to provide a chaplain for every ship. However, that changed when the United States joined World War I in 1917. This war again prompted some major changes with Navy chaplains. The Naval Chaplaincy expanded from 40 to over 200 chaplains by the war's end. Additionally, the Navy Chaplain Corps and Marine Corps relationship strengthened significantly during World War I, with chaplains serving 
in the trenches with the Marines in some of the most epic battles of the war. For almost a quarter of a millennium, the U.S. Navy Chaplain Corps has been called to serve God, country, and America's sea services. Echoing the words of St. Martin of Tours, in the name of the Lord Jesus, without weapons and protected only by the sign of the cross and an RP, Navy chaplains thrust themselves courageously into the thickest squadrons of the enemy on land and sea. Through wars and peacetime, in good times and bad, Navy chaplains have been there to provide sacraments, ministry, counseling, advice, and solace for sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen and their families in countless places around the world. Having risen to a force of over 800 ministers, we, today, celebrate the addition of the Navy's newest chaplain, who is once more vocati ad servitium. Thank you, Lieutenant um, Reedy. Um, next is going to be uh, the words to the guests from the man of the hour himself, Father Emmanuel Chibo. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to my commissioning ceremony. Since I made my intention to join the Navy, known to my family and friends recently, I've been getting questions that express surprise. Some who know me as a hospital chaplain wonder how Navy is coming into the story. Some who know me as the singing and dancing priest <laughs> also wonder where the Navy in me has been hiding. Well, my journey began from Nigeria, where I was born and raised in a police barracks. My father was a police officer, and both of my grandfathers fought in the Second World War as soldiers. As a young child growing in the barracks, I was drawn to the frequent marching drills of the policemen and women, their discipline and their immense contributions to the smooth running of the society. In elementary school and in high school, I was always a member of the marching drill club. And in both cases, I ended up as a drill master before my graduation. My mom, who is here with us today, was a teacher in my elementary school, and for two years, I had her as my drill instructor. <laughs> I'm sure you're proud. <laughs> you started all this. Huh? <laughs> I felt an attraction to the military, but I was eventually but eventually, I felt a stronger calling to the Catholic priesthood. And so, after elementary school, I sought and gained admission into a minor or high school seminary. I thought becoming a priest meant that I could no longer join any of the armed forces. But that did not extinguish my admiration for the discipline and dedication that I saw in military personnel. A new world opened to me when I got to the college seminary and found some members of the armed forces who were undergoing formation as seminarians. I wondered what they were doing in the seminary if they were already in the armed forces. Then they explained the concept of military chaplaincy to me. What I thought I had lost by going into the seminary suddenly began to stare at me once again. 
About three years after my priestly ordination, my bishop, Most Reverend Anthony Adaji, MSP of Ida Diocese in Nigeria, sent me on mission to the United States for hospital ministry. In San Diego, California, I found myself in this parish, Sacred Heart of Ocean Beach, where a significant percentage of parishioners are either active in the Navy, in the Navy Reserves, retired from the Navy, or have family members in the Navy. As a hospital chaplain, I visited Navy veterans who shared very inspiring stories about Navy chaplains, or chaps, as they prefer to address chaplains. At this point, my interest in the military began to be more directed towards the finest Navy in the world. The reality of the possibility of becoming a United States Navy chaplain finally dawned on me when Father Joseph Coffey, now Bishop Joseph Coffey, Auxiliary Bishop for the Archdiocese for the Military Services, was stationed in San Diego, and he came to live in the same parish here with me. Seeing how he combined a disciplined prayer life, a pastor's heart, good human relationship with a disciplined military life was very inspirational to me. I will never forget the day he took me out for a walk and talked to me about being a Navy chaplain. He answered all the questions I had in my mind without me asking him. In 2018, it was a moment of accomplishment and pride for me when I took my oath for citizenship. The promise to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States was very significant to me. I thought of the sacredness of the Constitution that made it possible for me to become a United States citizen with full rights and responsibilities. I thought of the men and women of the armed forces who give all to protect this Constitution, and I said, I, too, can be one of them. There is something about the Navy chaplaincy that is in line with my theological foundation. The incarnation is foundational to my theology. In the incarnation, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, became flesh like us and dwelt among us to minister to us. I was a chaplain to students, but I was not a student at the same time. I am presently a hospital chaplain, but I am not a patient at the same time. In the Navy, I look forward to being a chaplain to the Navy while being a naval officer myself. What a great privilege to serve God, to serve the nation, and to serve humanity. What a great privilege to live my priesthood like Jesus Christ. I will be one with those that I serve in the Navy. Thank you for listening. Thank you for that wonderful speech. It almost brought tears to my eyes because I can identify we're from the same place. I know the struggles. Next, I'd like to take um, remarks from Captain Mark Arlen, please. This is quite a production here. Uh, so I'm Captain uh, Mark Thomas. Um, I know Father Emmanuel through my wife, um, and I'm a nurse corps officer at, at Balboa Hospital. So I appreciate the uh, the chaplain uh, history here. Um, I'm honored to be here and uh, be the commissioning officer for Father Emmanuel. God, country, community. 
Father Emmanuel is about to embark on a journey few others in our society ever do. Only a small percentage of Americans raise their right hand and pledge an oath to the Constitution. Father Emmanuel has been called to service to God, to his community. Father Emmanuel is going to answer the call to service to his beloved country today, honoring the country and values of his serving. Most of you already know that how special this man is, having married members of the Scripps Mercy family, devoting weekends to pregnant uh, women, soon to be mothers, and talents galore, singer, songwriter, musician, my favorite dancer. Uh, but the story that epitomizes the uniqueness and awesomeness of Father Emmanuel is when COVID pandemic hit. All non-essential personnel were told to stay home, limiting access to hospitals to focus on the impending surge of patients. No surgeries, no appointments. Did that stop Father Emmanuel? His duty? No. He went and got fit, fit tested for an N95 mask, helping the dying and the dead find peace, easing the suffering of those inflicted hero. As the member of the United States Chaplain Corps, Father Emmanuel will be asked to reach further. Navy chaplains are the only corps to serve alongside the Navy underway, Merchant Marines, the Coast Guard, and the United States Marines, as they rely on guidance and counsel from our chaps. And he won't be there just for the Catholics. He'll be asked to shepherd face at all hours of life. Father Emmanuel has been asked many times to provide the sacrament of the sick. He may be asked to do so for our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters that gave the ultimate sacrifice to our country. Military service cannot be successful without you. Your support of Father Emmanuel will be vital to his success. I would not be here today if it was not work for the support of my parents, my daughters, my friends, and especially my wife. Lastly, when I give the oath of office, um, please note that Father Emmanuel isn't pledging an oath to the president, to the military, or to any person He's pledging an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America and the freedoms it protects. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Allen. Next, we're gonna have um, the oath of office. May I please ask that everybody rise, please? Father Emmanuel. Front and center. Attention to oath. Aye. Aye. Emmanuel Inedu Ochibo. Do, do solemnly swear that I, will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America. Against all enemies. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. That I, will bear true faith and allegiance that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution, to the Constitution and, the country. and I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation. so help me God. Congratulations, Chair. Thank you so much. At ease, Father Ochibo. Well, welcome to the Navy now. <laughs> There's no going back. <laughs> All right, so next is gonna be the painting ceremony. Um, can you face the congregation, please? May I please have on the stage here with me, uh, Father Lawrence Aggie, John Ochibo, 
Blessing Onoja and Mrs. Esther Ochibo. Father Aggie and John Ochibo are going to place on the shoulder uh, the shoulder boards. It's the it's the uh, that signifies uh, Chaplain Ochibo's uh, rank in the Navy. So they're going to place that in uh, on on his uh, on his shoulder boards right now. Can you please go ahead? Lieutenant Ochigbos, cover. Before we go to the cover, the jacket will be placed by his mom. Well, because it's going to be worn by his mom. His cover is going to be placed on his head by his sister. Blessing on Ojo Mitchell. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Chaplain Lieutenant Emmanuel Uchigbo. Next is the first salute, and I'll share with you guys a quick history. While the exact origin is unknown, the tradition of the first salute is generally believed to stem from British military practices in colonial America. It was customary for new officers to be assigned a knowledgeable advisor from the enlisted ranks. It was the responsibility of the enlisted member to help quickly get the new officer up to speed with the military practices, customs, and history so the officer could be an effective leader. In gratitude for the valuable assistance the enlisted service member had given, he was rewarded with a portion of the newly commissioned officer's pay, which at the time amounted to $1 a month. Lieutenant Uchibu's first salute will be rendered by myself, Chief Olu Afar. Next is going to be appreciation by Lieutenant Chigbo.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I must admit at this point that what I'm going to do now is one of the most difficult things I'm doing today, saying thank you to those who deserve it. You've all been so wonderful, and I'm afraid that I may not be able to thank you in the way that really equals to what and whom you have been uh, to me. I'm going to try my best, but please, if I miss any name out, just know that I trust your love for me, that you will forgive me. <laughs> I would like to begin by thanking my local ordinary, my bishop, Most Reverend Anthony Adaji MSP, who ordained me and uh, deemed it fit to grant me the privilege of being on mission here in the United States, and also recently granted me the permission to extend my ministry to the United States Navy. He's not here in person, but he's ably represented by Father Lawrence Agi, and Father Lawrence Agi also happens to be my boss uh, here in the, uh, in the United States, as the uh, manager of the spiritual care, Scripps Mercy Hospital. Chula Vista, and San Diego. I'd like to specially thank our chief host, the pastor of Sacred Heart, Father Tom Kiley. Thank you for seeing me through the process up to this point, and thank you for being a saint in training. I'd like to specially thank all the parishioners of Sacred Heart for taking me in since I came to the United States and making me feel at home. Thank you for hosting this event, and even for what is coming after now. Um, the first pastor I met here, I don't know if he's able to make it here, but he promised to be here today, Father Ron Hibbert. I would like to specially thank him too. Uh, himself, along with his dog, Poco, we are the first to welcome me <laughs> to Sacred Heart. Mm. And I, I also newly gained a brother, here, retired Commander Keith Shuley, who is a priest in residence here. He has really been seeing me through up to this point, and uh, do not leave me at this point. Thank you. <laughs> mm. I would like to thank uh, my recruiter, Chief Olu Afara, who has been the master of ceremonies with my recruiter. And I would like to proudly share with you uh, that recently he won the national Chaplain Recruiter for the Year. Yes, that's Chief Akro. <laughs> so many times I questioned, am I really doing this? And he was there to always tell me, Father, trust me, we are getting in. And <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Lieutenant Brian Reedy, uh, United States uh, Navy. He's a Jesuit. Catholic priest, he gave the explanation of the duties and call. He came all the way from Los Angeles. Thank you, Father. I would like to thank uh, Chaplain, sorry, you're not a chaplain, uh, Captain <laughs> Mark Allen Thomas. So Captain Mark Allen Thomas was the one who administered uh, the oath of office. And like he shared with you, I got to know him through his beautiful wife, Dr. Charlotte Thomas, who is also my co-worker. We work in the same hospital, and she's very hardworking. Uh, through her, I've come to know the husband, and thank you for all you've been doing. Uh, I would like to thank retired Captain Charles Ice, United States Navy. He will be saying the closing prayer shortly after now, and he's one of the priests who helps, uh, one of the priests who help out here in uh, Sacred Heart, and uh, he has been my mentor also, encouraging me. It's worth it, coming to the Navy. Father, I'm doing it now. Thank you. <laughs> mm. um, I'd like to thank my brother priest here present, those I'm unable to mention, but I can see all of you. And it means a lot to me to have you brother priest here. Uh, the religious sisters all here. 
I sincerely appreciate uh, your presence. The technical crew, those putting everything together to help us keep the memory of this uh, event through videos and uh, photographs and also helping out the public address system, I sincerely appreciate Edgar Casares, David Gonzalez, Greg Sprosti, Eric Cordero, and Sonia Cintron. My family, as you are aware of, came outside of these states, came from out of states, and uh, I have some friends who have helped me in hosting them and then uh, helping with the mobility. I would like to especially thank you, uh, Jackie Smith, uh, Mario, and Esther Diaz. And I know there was a long list of friends who were ready to help. They said, please, Father, bring as many as you can. Your family is our family. I remember all of you, and I sincerely appreciate uh, the staff of Scripps Mercy Hospital, San Diego and Chula Vista. I understand, I can see you, the leadership and uh, staff, you are all here. Thank you. Many of you have taken the day off, and some just took some hours off to be here. I sincerely appreciate. And there are other places I extend my ministry to, and I can see you represented here. Uh, from Our Lady of Mount Carmel, I can see from uh, Our Lady of Peace, the African Catholic uh, community, the New York Catechumena Way. Uh, and please, for my friends and uh, for other my friends who are outside of this category that I've not listed, I can see you all, and I sincerely appreciate. And uh, all the military uh, personnel here, thank you for taking out your time. Those on active duty, uh, retired, those on reserves, I sincerely appreciate your presence. You've given a color to this, and you are helping me to have a true feel of what I am stepping uh, into. And I uh, haven't thank all I'm able to uh, remember now. Please uh, permit me to introduce my family members because I know it will be more difficult for me to step outside and tell you who everyone is. I'll quickly run through so that you can know them and then feel free to ask more about them, I mean, about me from them. And uh, <laughs> I'm remembered to say only the good things. <laughs> okay. Like uh, you already uh, met her, uh, I have here with me uh, my mom, uh, Mrs. Esther Ochigo. Uh, my mom is up here. Mm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. mm. Mm. And my dad, like many of you know, uh, is now in heaven, I believe, by the grace of God. Uh, but his uh, youngest uh, sister uh, is here. Uh, her name is uh, Queen Ochi. And uh, even though her name is, in, in addition to her name being queen, in 1986, uh, she won the beauty contest. Uh, so this uh, former Miss Nigeria Airways. Auntie, could you please stand so that I could see you? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And she's here with uh, her husband, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ochi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You can tell how much my aunt loves me, so that's why she went and married an Emmanuel. <laughs> um, and uh, Mr. Emmanuel is here also with uh, his younger brother. I am sorry, I've not seen you since I was a little baby, and I'm surprised to see you here. Thank you so much. Uh, pardon me, I've been trying to recall your name, and you're here with your daughter. Remind me, please. Francis. I was saying Frank. Thank you. Francis is here with uh, his lovely daughter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Mm. And um, like I've said to many of you, I am one of six. I am number three of six uh, children. So the number one is here, is, uh, Mr. John Ochibo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, the number two is not here with us present, but I'm sure she's watching somewhere. Mrs. Agnes Omale, you're on video, I know. So, hi, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. And then I'm the number three, Lieutenant Ochibo. <laughs> and uh, the number four is uh, Mrs. Blessing Onoja Michelle. So. Thank you. Mm. And she's here with uh, the husband, Mr. Moses Onoja. Thank you. Yeah. Now she's here. Uh, they are here with their children. Uh, the first one, uh, Emanuela Onoja. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Thank you. And then the next one, virtue or not yeah. And the next one, Emmanuel Onoja. <laughs> and then the baby of the house, Victor Onoja. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I continue with the counting. So blessing is number four in the family. So the number five is Michael Ochibo. <laughs> Thank you. And the number six is not here with us, but I'm sure he's watching uh, somewhere. He's uh, Mr. Matthias Ochibo. Baby of the house, I'm waving you. Thank you for, uh, thank you. Mm. And we have a wonderful uh, family friend who is here with us too, all the way from Minnesota, uh, Lucy Oko. Mm. 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 Thank you so much, one and all. I sincerely appreciate your love. And please, pardon my inadequacy in saying thank you. I must certainly say I cannot thank you enough. And God, who knows all that is done in secret and openly, will certainly reward all of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Next, can I please have uh, Mr. Greg Sprotsky come here for uh, the announcements, please? So we all know how much Father Emmanuel loves announcements, which is, <laughs> which is why I get to do this. Um, on behalf of Father Tom Kiley, Sacred Heart Parish, and Lieutenant Emmanuel Ochigbo, I'd like to invite everyone to the reception in the courtyard and the parish hall to enjoy some refreshments after the closing prayer. There's also going to be an opportunity shortly for photographs with Lieutenant Ochigbo right here after we close the ceremony. We would ask uh, that we could organize into the following priority system for the photographs. First will be uniformed military personnel, followed by priests and religious, then family, and lastly, other friends who want to come up for a photo op. Now I'll invite retired Captain Charles Ice, who is our, sorry, retired Captain Charles Ice, U.S. Navy and Catholic priest, to come forward to offer the closing prayer. Let us all pray. <clears throat> Almighty Father, Holy One above, open with open arms and open hearts, we come before you today. Your steadfast love fills all of the earth and eternal is your love. Have mercy on us all, Almighty God, O God of goodness, according to your abundant love and wash us all clean and make us whole and restore us to your holiness and to your joy. Father in heaven, we beg you to watch over now our chaplain Emmanuel. We ask you to keep him from all harm and to keep him in, in wonderful spirits all of his Navy career and all of his life. We ask you to watch out for him, especially when he is at sea, and watch out for him in the wonderful mild seas and the raging seas that can come along. We ask you to bless him if he does marine duty, almighty God, because <laughs> he'll need some special blessings, oh Lord, with the Marines. They're very good people though, they're excellent. And they love their chaplain, they love their chaplain. Almighty Father, watch out for Chaplain Emmanuel, keep him safe, keep him sound, keep him holy, and keep him, O oh Lord God, always in your loving embrace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, Father, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. 
and ever. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the closing of the ceremony. And uh, next, we'll just uh, go ahead and start um, with the photographs. So as announced, five <laughs> So as announced, we'll start with the uh, military personnel.